In the early 19th century, the British controlled most of Canada, having taken land from the French in wars in the previous decades. However, there was still a large Francophone population and a population of Matisse, people descended from Native Americans and French settlers. They were primarily in Rupert's land, then controlled by the Hudson Bay Company. However, the Hudson Bay Company's monopoly over the fur trade was being challenged by the Northwest Company, and this, along with the over-harvesting of animals, meant that their stock had plummeted in price. Plus, whereas the Hudson Bay Company relied on English exports, the Northwest Company traded pemmican with the natives, which was dried buffalo meat. Meanwhile, in Scotland, the Highland clearances were driving many Highland Scots from their homes and across the Atlantic. And Thomas Douglas, the Earl of Selkirk, founded colonies in Canada for these emigrants, and he was able to buy cheap stocks in the HBC to create a further colony. In 1811, the HBC granted him control over land around the Red River, but this was occupied by Native American tribes and the Matisse, who traded pemmican with the Northwest Company in the area. Nevertheless, a couple dozen Scottish families made their way to the colony, but faced starvation throughout the winter and throughout the War of 1812. So the governor of the colony, Macdonald, issued the Pemmican Proclamation in early 1814. This stopped the export of food and reduced the number of buffalo the Matisse could kill in the area. They even imposed a blockade on the river and seized boats belonging to the Northwest Company, leaving them without food and disrupted native hunting. So the Northwesterners agreed to supply the colonists throughout the winter of 1814 in exchange for the return of some of the goods that the colonists had taken. But in 1815, the Northwesterners began to plot to attack the colony, and that September they arrested the colony sheriff. But Governor Macdonald responded by raising a militia, and Selkirk petitioned the British government to dispatch infantry to defend the colony. The British, however, only granted Selkirk a dozen men to act as its own personal guard. So, as a stakeholder in the HBC, Selkirk raised a small Hudson Bay force. The Northwesterners also began to recruit natives, soldiers, and voyageurs, and both sides began to make arrests. Plus, the Matisse began to disrupt the buffalo herds the settlers depended on, so with few supplies, some colonists took up the Northwesterners' offer of safe passage to travel to Upper Canada. The new temporary governor of the colony, Macdonald, threatened to fire cannons at the leaving colonist boat, but this just encouraged angry settlers to detain their own officers in April and leave with stolen weapons. But fighting between the two companies finally erupted in June when colonists fired upon some Matisse troops, but the Matisse fought back and eventually entered the colony itself. Governor Macdonald quickly surrendered and the colony was destroyed. But the displaced colonists met with a brigade of Hudson Bay Company troops and they returned and started rebuilding in August. And from there in October, the HBC moved on Fort Gibraltar to capture weapons. By late 1815, the colony had a new governor in Semple and over 150 new settlers arrived. So the Northwesterners began to prepare to attack again but the colonists decided to act first and seized Fort Gibraltar again and destroyed it. They then brought in reinforcements from Montreal, captured Fort Pembina, and blockaded the Northwesterners' access to Lake Winnipeg. So in June, the Northwesterners finally launched their attack from Coeur Appelle along with the Matisse. Semple agreed to meet with their representative, however the colonists fired the first shots. The Matisse, who were more numerous and skilled sharpshooters, quickly returned fire, and during the Battle of Seven Oaks, they killed over 20 colonists while only losing one of their own. The colonists, having lost so many, fled, but Lord Selkirk set off for Fort William to try and rescue those still left in prison. However, by now, the British had ordered the Governor-General of Canada to end hostilities between the trading companies. But Selkirk proceeded to retake Fort Douglas, and both sides continued to confiscate provisions of passing traders and capture small trading posts. By June, news of the British government's demands reached both sides, and they agreed to lay down their arms, and a thorough investigation was launched. In 1818, Coltman's report provided numerous testimonies, and concluded that the Hudson Bay Company was the first aggressor by constructing the colony in the first place. Some individuals were brought to trial, but in 1821, due to British pressure and declining profits, the trading companies merged, and those fighting on opposite sides were now working together. As for the Matisse, who were living under Hudson Bay Company rule, in 1869 they rose up under Louis Riel as part of the Red River Rebellion. And although the rebellion was crushed, they were successful in forcing the Canadian government to accept the Red River colony into the Canadian Confederation as the province of Manitoba.